Today's video is going to be a bit different. You guys have loved my tutorials and shown unbelievable support and appreciation. So first of all, thank you. Secondly, I thought maybe I should also share my workflow and the tools that I personally use every day in my design process. Over the past few years, I've designed products for all kinds of companies, from big organizations to small startups. I've experimented with multiple design tools, from the oldies like Adobe Photoshop to dreadful days of Adobe XD and Sketch to modern products like Figma and UIZard. But here's the thing, I don't believe in shiny new tools just because they're trending my stack has to be refined. Each app has a role. And if it's in my toolkit, it's because it has earned its place. So today I'm walking you through the tools that I actually use, why they matter, what they help me do, and how they fit into a bigger design workflow. And honestly, for those who are starting their UX design careers, these tools also look incredible on your resume. So if you have these tools on your resume, it means you're someone who knows actually what they're doing. Now, before we dive in, quick heads up. I've got a little giveaway announcement waiting for you at the end of this video, so stay tuned. You don't want to miss it. All right, let's start with my day-to-day -day design and research tools. On top of my list is Figma. I know it's very obvious, but hear me out. I use Figma as my primary UI UX design tool for making mockups to adding prototypes and, of course, some addition with whiteboarding through a fig jam. See, one of the reasons I love Figma is that because it gives you so much in one place. Fig jams, slides, and now even no code tools like Figma Sites and AI tool, Figma Make. It's honestly jam packed with power. But what really sets it apart is that it's built for product designers. The whole design system workflow is better, variables, design tokens, auto layouts, component properties everything feels thought through. And on top of that, you've got massive community library of templates, UI kits, and some mind-blowing plugins. And these keep growing every day. And there's dev mode. Even if you're not a developer, just having an easy design to dev handoff built into it, it's a game changer. By the way, if you want to learn Figma, like really learn everything, check out my free Figma course. Link is in the description. Now, I agree Figma prototyping still needs some work especially in the motion design department. Yes, you can do motion design in Figma, but let's be honest, even a tiny micro interaction means duplicating 10 frames just to get that smooth animation. It's possible, but it's clunky, time consuming, and honestly, it feels like hacking the tool. And that's where the second tool on my list comes in, Jitter. For those who don't know, Jitter is a super lightweight browser-based animation tool made for UI designers. Think of it like After Effects Lite. I can take my Figma frames, import them, and in minutes create slick animations that feel alive. This tool is essential to take your designs from just good to mind-blowing. When I need some complex animation, I still go to After Effects. For anybody who's not aware, it's Adobe's motion graphics software, the holy grail of animation. It's insanely powerful, but it's very technical and very complicated. It feels like you're piloting a spaceship with 2000 buttons. Jitter is much simpler and easy to use. Now, as you know, UX design or product design is not all about making pretty mockups. It's about understanding the user needs and behaviors. And this is where Hotjar comes in. For those who don't know, Hotjar is user behavior analytics tool. In plain words, it lets you see how people actually use your website or app. It gives you heat maps, session recordings, scroll tracking, and even rage clicks. So instead of just guessing why users are bouncing off a flow, I can literally watch them struggle. And trust me, it's both painful and hilarious to see people missing that obvious flow that you spent weeks putting together. For me, Hotjar is like a reality check. It kills the assumptions and forces me to design based on evidence, not just vibes. And if I want a quick feedback at scale, I use SurveyMonkey for that. It's basically an online survey tool and it has 
everything for feedback collection, creating polls, creating surveys from ready-made templates, adding skip logic so people only see questions that are relevant to them, built-in analytics tools so that I don't have to mess around with spreadsheets. So whenever I need a quick validation on a design decision, SurveyMonkey is my shortcut to fast and structured feedback. Now let's talk Reloom. Reloom is perfect if you're working on a website design. Its AI features help you go from just an idea to a useful concept design in minutes. You can visualize style guide live inside a concept website, which is a pretty big deal because seeing how colors and typographies and styles work together in real designs give you much more clarity. And of course, it works nicely with Figma, so you can build out your concepts quickly and refine them later in Figma. By the way, I've got a full Reloom tutorial on my channel, so check out if you want to see it in action. Link is in the description. Now let's talk inspiration, because every designer, no matter how senior, needs inspiration. And no, I'm not saying copying. I'm saying inspiration. That's how we say copying, but in a civilized way. Big difference. Anyways, for me, Mobin is like a secret library of real world app designs. Want to see how Uber onboards its users or Notion handles invitation? It's all in there. I go to Mobin when I need to study patterns from best products in the industry and see how they solve problems. Then there is Dribble and Behance, which I use more like a creative library. Uh, this is where designers share shots, case studies and experiments. It's great for spotting the trends that are going on or collecting mood board materials or just getting unstuck when I feel burnt out. And finally, we have the classics, Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop. Illustrator is still my go to whenever I need to create complex logos or icons or detailed vector graphics. Photoshop, on the other hand, is king of image editing. From heavy Photoshop manipulation to subtle color collection, nothing really beats that. I don't use them daily anymore because Figma covers most of my workflow, but when I need them, there's still no replacement for these classics. You don't have to learn them for your product design career, but it's nice to have on your CV. Last but not least on my design tools is Framer. Framer is my favorite no-code website design tool. This is where I take my designs and turn them into a real live website. It's perfect for web design projects. Now, I have tested Figma sites and Webflow. Figma sites is nowhere close to Framer in terms of features. Webflow is good, but still Framer offers some really unique features. Framer is actually kind of a must to know in today's world. I actually am working on my portfolio in Framer as well. Best part is that it has some really powerful features like CMS and code components, which basically unlocks everything for you. Whatever you wanna do, you can do using code components in Framer. And now in the world of AI, even chimps can code to some level. Heck, Framer has its own AI workflow that helps you make anything you ask for. So yeah, check out Framer. I've added a link in the description. Now let's talk about some AI tools because that's the big hype nowadays. And to be honest, I'm not using AI tools to replace any of my core tools. I'm using them as assistants. Different AI tools work for different specific things. And here's exactly what I use them for and why. First on the list is ChatGPT. I use it for brainstorming, idea generation, and problem solving. Whether it's just drafting a UX copy, or exploring flow variations, or even just talking through design trade-offs, ChatGPT acts like my creative partner. Sometimes I'll use it for debugging code and snippets or generating quick user scenarios when I'm building a flow. It's like having a junior designer who's always available minus the salary. Next up is Claude AI. Think of Claude as my deep thinker. Where ChatGPT is great for rapid brainstorming, Claude is better when I need long structured answers, like detailed documentations, heavy code explanations, or writing long form product strategy. When I need a calm, thoughtful second brain, I go to Claude. Then there's Lovable. 
and this is a fun one. Lovable is like my vibe coding assistant. If I want to quickly test out a coding idea or build something lightweight or just jam on early product concepts, Lovable lets me move fast. It's not about shipping production ready apps. It's about experimenting and exploring with AI as my coding partner. For visuals, I use Midjourney and Adobe Firefly. These two are like my creative steroids. Midjourney is amazing when I want out of the box artistic moody concepts. Firefly on the other hand integrates more with my workflow and gives me editable design ready assets. I often use them to spin up quick mood boards, background assets and style explorations before refining them in Figma. So again, I'm not using AI to replace me as a designer. I'm using AI as my support crew. It's like having assistants that handle the busy work, the brainstorming and the creative sparks while I stay in control of the actual design decisions. So that were all my go-to day-to-day tools that help me design and code. Now you can disagree with me, but this is my workflow and it works amazing for me. If you have better suggestions, drop them in the comments. I will test it out and if I like them enough to integrate into my daily workflow, I will give you free early access to one of my Figma plugins that I'm going to be launching soon. And this is the giveaway I was talking about. I'm building a really powerful Figma plugin that will have some great features that other plugins are actually charging for. But on top of that, I've built some mind blowing features and those will be part of our paid plan. And I'll give you a little hint about the plugin. It's related to design system tokens and variables. So drop in your suggestions. If I like your suggestion of the tool and I integrate into my workflow, you get free access to my plugin. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more content on design. And like always, thank you for watching. See you in the next one.